We turn now our attention to biomedical research and Singapore's success in this frontier. There's been a lot of interest in trying to understand how to replicate the hot housing that it took to gain international recognition in this sector. Now, Singapore now ranks seventh, that's seventh globally for biomedical research. And it's only, it is the only Asian country, in fact, in the top 10 list and has long credited big names in the scientific world or so-called whales for its success. The Prime Minister used that analogy of whales to groom so-called guppies when he held it as an example of why the country needs to scout for the best talent to hothouse and nurture local talent. Two so-called guppies, now big fish in their own right. They are with us in the studio this evening. Professor Lisa Ung is an infectious diseases expert who is making significant contributions in hepatitis, SARS, and also COVID-19 research. And Dr. Ung Hui Ching is working on medicines for diseases like COVID-19. Both work at different arms of ASAR. Good evening to both of you. It's good to see you here. Lisa, let's begin with you. Um, perhaps you could take us through what it was like uh, to be mentored by one of the biggest names in, uh, in the biomedical world, uh, Professor Edison Liu. Yes, uh, thank you for having me this evening. So at that time, you know, it was around 2003. So uh, Singapore just started the uh, biomedical uh, research um, aggressively. So um, under the uh, mentorship of uh, Ed Liu, he uh, really enabled me to actually see things from a very different perspective. And uh, it always uh, reminded me of one thing, that uh, science is international. We actually need to constantly communicate, network with uh, people from all over the world to keep ourselves uh, relevant, mm -hmm. updated. And I think specifically, he uh, also was very empowering. Um, he made many of us, you know, who, who, who mentored uh, with him, that uh, we could make it, we could do it, and we should always push ourselves to the limit. And what could we do to actually make a difference? Mm -hmm. Feeling empowered makes the difference, doesn't it? It yes. sort of, mm -hmm. it gives you that extra edge, the fuel that you need uh, to sort of inspire, inspire and inspire you. Mm -hmm. Hui Ching, let's bring you in on the conversation. Your mentor uh, was none other than Sir David Lane. He was recently awarded the honorary citizenship for Singapore for his contributions. What would you say were some of the crucial skills that you picked up from him? Yeah, so I think I was very fortunate to be mentored by um, Professor David Lane. He was a scientific giant. And um, I think what I really appreciated was David saw my strengths and uh, my talents outside of work in the research lab. Uh, he recognized that because I've worked at the EDB and I had an inclination towards working in the biotech industry, he provided opportunity. So I think I really had benefited from the environment that uh, Mr. Philip Yeo created at that time. He brought in, he created the scientific talent um, community of top talents um, and I had the opportunity to interact with them and um, really learned a lot from all of them. It's in interesting because you, you might know what your strengths are or you might have, you know, you allude to some of them, but sometimes it takes somebody else to kind of show you another perspective, how you can grow those skills and strengths as well. Lisa, what are some essential characteristics, would you say, of this, uh, of a healthy and beneficial sort of whale guppy relationship? Yeah, I guess it's the, the constant challenge to think out of the box, to not um, stay, you know, to remain very comfortable in your comfort zone, to keep stepping out into the unknown, to be uh, willing and brave and daring to try. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't try, you wouldn't know. So I think in science, that is actually very important because mm -hmm. we need to challenge our minds. We need to challenge what is accepted you know in order to push to the next level so i guess this is something that uh, i continue to find very fascinating mm. and in terms of um, guiding uh, my team or even mentoring or even any kind of uh, exchange i think this is something that i constantly uh, do to the younger people and i like to challenge them yeah well. we we talk about creativity mm. as being yeah. this relationship between risk experimentation yes. and yeah. failure yes. and you, you have to feel safe to fail mm. yes. as well because there's mm -hmm. so much of it along the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't want it to to fall and then not feel like you can get straight back yes. up again and mm -hmm. keep trying correct yeah. so 
how are you mentoring the next generation? Because this guppy whale analogy, the, the metaphor, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. uh, is being used a lot. People are talking about it, the, mm -hmm. the, how effective it can be. Yes. So, what, I mean, Huiching, let's, let's begin with you mm -hmm. on this one. Um, what would you say is, is uh, a good starting point? Yeah, I think what I've learned and what I've also tried to pass on to my younger colleagues really is to learn fast uh, from our mistakes, so to mm -hmm. just pick ourselves up, um, particularly in the area of work um, I'm in. I'm at the Experimental Drug Development Centre and drug discovery is a long and hard journey. It's important to just keep going. So really, um, and to think about it as a, a team spot, working together with different partners all across Singapore, internationally, to try and translate science into medicine and, and to keep that vision, to keep ourselves going on that journey. And one of the things that's uh, been keeping both of you busy, I'm sure, is the whole COVID-19 pandemic yeah. mm -hmm. and your research that you've been doing on it. Lisa, I know yes. both of you are involved in this. Lisa, maybe you could tell us uh, more about the research that you've been doing. Sure. So, so at the uh, ASA Infectious Diseases Lab, which I currently uh, am taking care of now, it's, uh, you know, how could we actually use science to work closely together with our clinical partners and also other uh, academic institutions to um, not just look at discovery research, but how could we actually translate this that will actually enable and uh, improve clinical management. So this requires us to constantly um, communicate, uh, discuss very closely with clinical partners to actually understand what is the clinical need. It shouldn't be... Um, something that is just uh, for publication, but it has to be useful and change, even uh, refine certain uh, uh, um, um, uh, protocols. So I guess this is where um, um, the next generation of uh, scientists you know, should continue to bring this forward to actually close the, uh, the gap between uh, basic science and uh, clinical uh, and, and you know, to have more uh, useful translational uh, mm. outcomes. Yes, there's a great deal of rigour that goes into mm -hmm. the research and the application of that. Yeah. Uh, Huixing, wh what about for you during this pandemic? Uh, where has your research on COVID-19 taken you? Yeah, so um, over the past couple of years, we've been working on a small molecule um, against COVID-19. And earlier on this year, we were able to announce the, the partnering of this asset with, uh, with a company. And uh, so really for us, it's, it's again, as Lisa has alluded to, translating our science into something that's meaningful, meeting an unmet medical need. So mm. we've done that not just in infectious diseases. We have also now done it for oncology. So just a couple of months ago, have also, through our partnership, developed panel of normal antibodies for oncology and now license it to a pharma. So we really look forward to work with companies here in Singapore to continue to translate our science into medicine to help yes. patients. No doubt you continue to work with lots of very talented people as well within your teams mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. And then going back to this whole guppy whale mm -hmm. metaphor, uh, PM said that um, the manpower and trade and industry ministries, as long with, along, along with economic uh, agencies as well, are soon going to announce initiatives to attract top talent mm -hmm. uh, to Singapore. The effort is ongoing. It, it's a non-stop process. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you recommend this sort of guppy whale system to continue? It's something that we've had in play for so many decades. Yes, I think so. I yeah. think it's important that, um, you know, the more experienced ones of us continue to pass on what we've learned to um, the, the younger generation and, and really to foster really a collaborative environment where mm. um, the experience that we gain is not lost. We pass on the best practices just as we have benefited from um, our mentors. Yes. Yeah. And Lisa, do you think that there's a, a good ratio to have at all when it comes to uh, the amount of top talent that we bring in from mm -hmm. overseas or wherever, yeah. wherever it may yeah. be from around yeah. the world uh, to come to Singapore to nurture uh, the younger generation? Well, certainly um, Singapore is in a very different place now than uh, when it first started uh, um, several years ago. So at that time, you know, there were really so few mm -hmm. local uh, talents, but I think right now we're in a different place. Yes. But certainly, as I mentioned, uh, science is international and we, in order to stay relevant mm -hmm. and competitive, we always need this exchange. So in terms of, um, there will be whales from anywhere, even in Singapore. So mm -hmm. I think the the, um, the part that, you know, how could we benefit and, you know, take the best from everywhere mm. and adapt them to what is relevant to Singapore.
Mm. I think this is where I think we are in a, a very good uh, advantage, a mm -hmm. very good position now. And, and what about the role that both of you are playing uh, as you venture overseas, as your work is recognised around the world as well? Uh, is, have you had experience with that, you know, as perhaps uh, going to other countries as a visiting consultant and so on? Mm. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yes. yes, in the area of uh, infectious diseases. And uh, so I would not say that um, I go as an expert. I will say that, yes, I think it's to exchange. Mm -hmm. I also similarly, I will learn from, from the other side as well. And I think how could we benefit? How could we help which, uh, people? So I think there are things that uh, we've done here in Singapore that we could be more advanced due to the setup and opportunities. And this is where how could we you know, share some of this information. Mm -hmm. And similarly, we will learn things from uh, the other end as well. So I think it's this constant exchange that mm. is important. Yeah. Yeah. So the other day we, would, we had uh, Dr. Philip Yeo in the studio to talk about uh, this playbook um, that uh, Singapore has used over the years, the, uh, the, the guppy whale um, metaphor. And he talked about the incentives that uh, years ago, you know, a t foreign talent would have to come here. I mean, what about for yourself? Have you ever thought, well, you know, doesn't matter where you are. I mean, have you ever thought there's something overseas that might attract you to be there? Do you need to, to be in a certain place? Or, you know, in, in this digital era, can you be anywhere as long as you have a really good lab? Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, I think Singapore provides a very good environment for the work that we do. Um, as I said, drug discovery and development is a team sport and at EDDC we are really collaborating with the universities, hospitals, medical schools here in Singapore to bring forward science to translate them into medicine and it requires a very collaborative spirit which we built up over the past years and being a small community I think we are able to continue to build on that I think to be able to go somewhere else in the world and create that again would, would take some effort and, and obviously I want to build upon all that we've done here over the past years. Well, we're very glad to see both of you stay right here and stay put. <laughs> Thank you so much, both of you, uh, for coming into the studios to share your experiences with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have been uh, speaking, we have speaking, been speaking there to Professor Lisa Ung from the A-Star Infectious Diseases Labs and the A-Star Biomedical Research Council and Dr. Ung Huiqing, who is from ASAR's Experimental Drug Development Centre.